So, someone requested that I chat about um, what happened in Chicago, kidnapping that occurred there. And at first, I racked my brain a little bit because I don't really think there is much I could say, but it turns out there is something I could add. You know, because honestly, I don't like saying the same thing other people have said. Gotten comments on my channel where people have already been, or some people will be upset or, you know, kind of drowned out because I do the same video response as other people do. So, uh, lately I've been trying to avoid doing that so no one can be upset with me repeating the same advice or doing the same videos other individuals have done. And I do feel the same way about specific subject matters as well. I try to be original here. So, uh, that, that's why I, one, that's one reason why it took me a little bit of time to get any video out because I've been trying to figure out, you know, different ways or different angles I could tackle specific topics without saying the same thing someone else has said. Otherwise, it would really be no point for you to come to this video, right? So I'll start the video off by, uh, I guess, briefly explaining what happened, for those of you all who don't know what happened. Though I'm, I'm sure you do, I'll just check in my bases. What happened was, um, in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, I think sometime last week, uh, four black people kidnapped a special needs uh, white man, and they held him in an apartment. I don't, know if, I don't think it was an abandoned apartment. But they held him in an apartment for, uh, I think, five hours for some period of time while they tortured him and uh, screamed, fuck white people, you know, uh, fuck Donald Trump and a bunch of other nasty uh, profanities. They made him drink toilet water and they beat him. There's a lot of really mean and nasty things to him. Uh, the interesting thing about this is people only know this all occurred was because um, one of the people uh, was actually a young lady. Uh, was recording and live streaming the entire thing onto Facebook, which uh, is a very interesting detail, at least to me. Uh, it confuses me to to no end, if I'm going to be completely honest there. So that's pretty much the gist of what happened. Now, why anyone would want me to discuss this subject matter is, is an interesting or a mystery to me, because I don't know what else I have left to provide other than to say that evil is indeed a force in this world and it needs to be stopped. All right, well, well, that is it. No, but I mean, seriously, I, I don't, I mean, the, the, the subject, the actual subject matter is pretty cut and dry as a pretty horrible thing. And I don't really think it needs to be said that it's a horrible thing. I think most people, aside from the individuals who partook in uh, what occurred, know that it was a bad thing. So, I mean, it would, I mean, you would be able to say that this is nothing but virtue signaling to sit around and say this is an abhorrent disgusting act of, of human debauchery and it's a good thing these people are in prison yeah I, I think most people kinda of feel that way about it I don't really think I think that kinda of, you know doesn't really need to be said so what does need to be discussed why is this a big kerfluffle and why are people talking about it a bunch I'll tell you exactly why because uh... you have two sides you have two sides from what I've seen you've got the side where a bunch of people have dubbed this uh... the black lives matter kidnapping where they blame the kidnapping on the organization Black Lives Matter, or apparently they believe that there's some association with what happened here and BLM. And um, from what I've seen, from what I've gathered, I do not know if there is any connection between these four black people who kidnapped this man and Black Lives Matter. Uh, I haven't seen any concrete connection. I haven't seen any connection that these people worked in any organization related to Black Lives Matter. Uh, that these people picked this man up from a Black Lives Matter meeting or some Black Lives Matter trap. I don't know. I haven't seen any connection. So, um, if there is a connection, by all means, tell me in the comment section below. I'll annotate this uh, part of the video. But again, from what I've gathered reading these different articles about the subject matter, a lot of people are just using conjecture to come to the conclusion that Black Lives Matter had anything to do with this. I cannot find any concrete link between the kidnapping and BLM. So, why, as to why it's called the Black Lives Matter kidnapping, is totally beyond me. I would imagine the reason why it's called the Black Lives Matter kidnapping is because it's in the spirit of Black Lives Matter. And what I mean by that, the, the more radical part of Black Lives Matter, the part that is upset with all white people foreverdom and uh, believe that they have to make white people suffer because their ancestors suffered, which as I've said numerous times in multiple videos that that's a horrible way to look at life and it's foolishness. Be as it may though, if that is what people mean, when they say the Black Lives Matter kidnapping, that it's in that, that evil spirit of punishing individuals who've done nothing wrong to you because of what happened in the past, then yeah, I mean, again, it wouldn't be a concrete connection, but it would be a connection. I, I can understand what people would mean when they say that, that the rhetoric of Black Lives Matter certainly influenced these uh, 
black people into doing the, the criminal actions that they did. I, I, I could get that. But again, as far as any concrete connection between the organization, Black Lives Matter, and what happened here, I cannot find any connection between the two. So I don't really think it should be called the Black Lives Matter kidnapping until a concrete connection can be forged between here. Again, if there is one, and I'm just ignorant about it, by all means, tell me. You know, I'm, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's okay. But from what I've seen, it just looks like a bunch of just four black people doing something evil. And so what that has to do with Black Lives Matter? Nothing from what I've seen other than the, the rhetoric and, and the vicious spirit of hating, hating white people is in there. That said, another part of what's going on here from what I've seen different people making videos about this is... um. They, they argued about whether or not this was a hate crime. And I am of, of two minds when it comes to this subject matter. I am of mind, number one, um, obviously, by any definition of the word hate crime, it is a hate crime. And no real conversation or discussion needs to be had on this. I mean, how many times do you talk to people about whether water is wet? Do you really have a long-standing conversation with, with most adults about, about the consistency of water? No, you don't. So as to why there needs to be any video explaining as to how this crime here is a hate crime is beyond me. Uh, I guess a lot of people would want to discuss and talk about how racism is power plus prejudice and all that bullshit, but that's that's all it is. It's bullshit. Racism is very simple, uh, concrete. It's, it's very simple. It's very simple. There's, there's no real complexity to racism, and that's you believe one race is more superior than the other, and that by that token, you believe one race or many races are inferior to another. It's that simple of a concept. All of this, these, there's a bunch of fluff that goes around. A lot of people even confuse the hatred of one race as racism, which I think a different word would need to be created there, because on a technicality, hating another thing does not mean you think it's inferior or superior. It means you don't like it. It means you have an intense dislike of it. You, know, you, can, you can hate something and still respect what it's done, you know, so again, even even if someone hates another race, that would not be racism as as understood, at least as the word should be understood, as an ideology that believes one race is superior than the other. A lot of people get the word wrong. A lot of people use the term racist, even now, just as, you know, you said something about a race I didn't like, not you said that one race was inferior or superior. That's, again, that's what the word means. So, so that being said, you know, I've, I've seen people... That's one thing that's been irking me for a while, the fact that people aren't using the word correctly. Because, and, and the ultimate problem of not using the word correctly is you end up confusing individuals and making them think in one particular way that they shouldn't. And they end up getting the wrong information. Again, you know, you, if, you, if someone said something you didn't like and you called it racist, then, there, then people in the thing expressing an opinion is, is racism. And that's clearly been seen consistently, you know, especially with what happened with the election between Donald Trump. A lot of people, um... A lot of people call Donald Trump a racist, and by that, the people who were supporting him racist because they didn't like what he had to say about some illegal immigrants. Again, you know, he, he wasn't saying that these people are inferior. He wasn't saying these people are even better or superior. What he was saying was these people have done bad things or doing horrible things, and they shouldn't come into our country legally. There's nothing racist about that. I mean, if there were a bunch of Nubians who were doing the same exact thing as these Mexican drug cartels, I, I would imagine Donald Trump would have said something similar about them. Uh, so again, I, I think that, I guess that, that's my, my first mind, I mean, whether or not it's, it's a hate crime, I mean, it's clear that it is, you know, obviously a hate crime by any definition of the word, however, in terms of, of racism, people aren't using that word correctly, which I guess I could expand upon in another video sometime in the future. But again, I guess to specifically focus on this topic, um, is it a hate crime? Yeah, I don't, again, I don't understand why there's even a conversation being had about it. Uh, there are a couple of, um... News are, I, I know a lot of people did video responses to um, this one woman who worked on the Democratic National Convention. I, I just do not care for mainstream media. I cannot commit her name to memory um, because, again, I find giving this, this type of conversation any bit of, of time is but foolishness to me. It really is, uh, and, and it sounds cocky and arrogant. I'm sorry, but, again, seriously, how often do you have to explain what a dog is to people, you know? Like, how often do you have to explain what the color blue is to people? You know, sit here and have to explain what a hate crime is to, to, to someone uh, that, that, I mean, to, to, that's clearly obvious that that is what the nature of it is, is, again, like, why would you do that? You know, you, you, don't, you don't try to sit there and try to explain language to someone. Uh, so, 
why anyone committed any time to trying to explain that this is a hate crime is is interesting to me. I don't think you should. I think anyone that even wants just to argue that point with you, you can immediately end the conversation with, I'm right, you're wrong, goodbye. Let's talk about something else. And nope, 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 I'm right, you're wrong. Done. Not 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 the whole, no, you win, patron. No, no, I win, I'm right, you're wrong, done. That's how that conversation should go. Yes, it was a hate crime. I don't see why any explanation needs to be had there to explain the nature of what happened. Be as it may, though, that leads me to my, my second thought. I mean, I don't really see what difference it makes whether it was a hate crime or not. I mean, considering the fact that something someone was wronged, I mean, whether they did it, I mean, like, like I, one, one comment I always think is, is absolutely hilarious when people talk about hate crimes is this. You, you don't commit crimes against people you like. I mean, I mean, like, oh, really? I mean, you may not care too much. I mean, a criminal might not think much about you. They may not hate you, but they certainly don't like you. So, I mean, calling it a hate crime, I mean, you know, what was it really due to the nature of what happened? I mean, it may change the context of what happened. I mean, say, say, like, say a, a, a gay person was beaten and you call that a, a hate crime because they were gay. Well, they were still, whether or not you call it a hate crime or not, the person was still beaten. I, I mean, the person was still physically assaulted. So, so what difference really does it make in the grander scheme? All it, all it does is change the context. All it does is it just makes people think that the world is worse than what it really is. And the world is worse. It's, it's pretty bad as it is, as it stands, you know. But having hate crimes and pushing this propaganda that this is a widescreen notion, that most people feel this particular way about a certain thing, only does nothing but continues to cycle, continues to go. And I'll get into that in just a second. But to wrap my, my, my thoughts up about hate crimes, I mean, again, I, hate crimes... I've always been an interesting thing to me. I, I mean, painting a swastika on 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 like someone's garage is like a hate crime. But I mean, like, really, what does that what does it really do? I mean, I don't I don't really see what's the point of labeling things a hate crime. I mean, the person doesn't like you. That's why they committed a crime against you. That's kind of par for the course there. Um, I guess you're supposed to. I think there are special legal sanctions that come with hate crimes. There's something specific that must occur with a hate crime. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to charge someone with it. But Again, to me, uh, that just kind of seems obvious that the person isn't a fan of you. So why do you need to, to tackle hate crime and, and give special charges? It just, you know, evil is evil to me. I don't really think you need this special sanction, you know, to say, oh, this person hated you. That's why. What difference is it? I mean, like, again, if my car was stolen and they stole it because I'm black, what difference is it? My car was still not here. That's how I feel about it. You know, if I was beaten, I was still beaten. It didn't matter why the person did it. The fact remains, you need to go to jail. They suck. They're terrible. Get them off the streets. That's how I feel about it. So yeah, it was a hate crime. By any definition, by any legal definition, I don't really see why any conversation needs to be had as to whether it or not it was a hate crime, because like it was. Um, so there's that. And I guess the last thing I'll need to discuss here are I guess some of the comments or responses I've seen when people talk about it. I remember I was on Naked Apes video, um, and I'm glad, I mean, his title kind of got me a little, perked my ears up a little bit, but it's really some of the comments I read. Well, one person... Um, said, I can't wait for the pendulum to swing to the other uh, direction. And so the, I responded to him. I was like, look, dude, the pendulum will never swing into the opposite direction. Because if it does, all it will do, at least in the minds of all of these Black Lives Matter people or all of these black nationalists or all these black people who hate white people, if the pendulum ever did swing in the opposite direction, a bunch of white people started to beat and attack black people, you do understand that in the minds of all those radicals that you don't like now, you would justify their behavior and they would become even more radical. It's like this. I remember when, when I was younger, I used to watch Jerry Springer all the time. I actually enjoyed Jerry Springer's final words. All that, all the crap I had to get through, that was, was funny sometimes, but I really did enjoy listening to what Jerry Springer had to say at the end. Um, that said, one thing that I saw happen on Jerry Springer a lot, and not even just Jerry Springer, I saw it happen on Steve Wilkos, even more at Povich, was um, one partner was in a relationship, one partner would constantly gaslight the other. One would constantly check their phone to see if they were cheating, uh, put trackers on their phone, um, ask them 125 different questions about where they've been. They would constantly berate the person, accuse them of cheating constantly. And so the other partner uh, would eventually say, well, since you keep accusing me of cheating, I may as well do it. And I always thought that that was the dumbest shit in the world. I always thought it was the dumbest thing you could possibly do in that situation. The smartest thing you could do in that situation would be to leave that relationship. <laughs> that would just saying. But the dumbest thing to do would be to stay in that relationship and then actually cheat on your partner. The reason why was because I realized in the other person's mind it justified every single action they took. It doesn't matter how crazy it was, them following you around, 
them tracking your text messages, them listening to your content. It doesn't matter. It if you cheat, you've justified them. And and now and I and I would imagine that in in a, in a twisted sort of way, that is exactly what these people wanted. And I know for a fact when it comes to on um, these different black people or Black Lives Matter, the, the the radical form of Black Lives Matter, uh, I know for a fact that they are trying to gaslight white people. They are trying to create the adversary they want to fight. And they are being successful at it. But I'm here to say, do not let them be successful at it. Because all you're going to do is just embolden them and try to make, and they're just going to try even harder. That's what they want. These people want to create an antagonist to fight. And if you hope that eventually other white people are going to get angry and get upset about what happened, and they start fighting back, then you're just going to create an even worse problem. It's just going to become a cluster fuck of a situation of a bunch of people hitting each other that solves nothing and does nothing. I mean, think about that one for a second. I mean, are you, you really hope that the world gets gets worse, that, that, that white people start attacking other black people because some black people did something wrong? Well, think about that one for a second. Think about what's actually going on. You had some black people attacking white people who have done nothing wrong. And that's horrible in itself. So you would want, so you are telling me you want other white people now to attack black people who've done nothing wrong because of what other black people have done. So, so here we are again, we have this cycle of violence where we hurt individuals who haven't done anything wrong to us because of what someone else did. And that is a consistent theme in us as human beings, consistently. I mean, this is one of the biggest bases of racism ever, and prejudice in the way we treat each other badly. We don't look at the actions of individuals, we look at the actions of wholesale groups. And that's a terrible way to look at things. Because I, I've noticed no one ever looks at the wholesale positive actions of any group. No one ever looks at a whole group and, as positive. Look at Japan. They made PS4. They're all great people. No one ever does that. It's always the shitty, terrible actions. And even then, of a minority of people. You know, even then, it's always the minority of people who've done something wrong, then splatter it all on all of us. And here's the interesting thing about the, the mindset of wishing or hoping that other white people get upset. Most black people don't even like these gangsters or thugs or these people who hurt their kids. Other black, guess what? Guess what, white people? Most black people agree with you that this is a the terrible, horrible thing. So you wanting to hurt those black people just hurt you in the end. They already agree with you. They already don't like them. They already want them to go to jail. So, so why would you want to make the problem worse? You know, it's that type of mindset that I see get fostered. And, I, and again, that's the point. That's what a lot of these gaslighters want. They want you to be angry. They want you to become the very antagonist, to become the, the villain in their minds. So the best way to beat them is to not let them. No, don't let them win. Don't become that, that bitter, angry white person they want you to be. They want you to start fighting black people. They want you to start being racist. They want you to start trying to hurt black people. Don't do it. Don't, don't let them. Don't let them win. Beat them at their own game. That's the whole point of them pushing all of this money. That's the same thing with the mainstream media. I mean, part of the blame, part of the, the problem here was the mainstream media that, that pumped all the different racist, anti-Trump messages, said a whole bunch of nasty things about white men and all of them, and even white women, when they found out a bunch of white women voted for Trump. That was funny. But that's, they are also part of the reason, part of the cause of what created this clusterfuck of a situation. So don't let them win. Don't let the pendulum fall in the other direction. Beat them at their own game. These people are gaslighting you on purpose. Don't let them win. You know, don't. So that's the last thing I have to say about that. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, you know, this, this message gets out to some people. Hopefully this, this means something to you because, again, the cycle of violence will continue to occur unless someone puts their foot down and say, enough is enough. You know, I'm, I'm done. You know, again, uh, it would, it's nothing but virtue signaling to sit here and say this was a horrible, tragic, of course it was. I and mean, that kind of remained, that kind of doesn't really need to be said. It was an evil thing. And that said, I mean, we, we have to consider there are a couple of good things that happened here. For one, the, the four perpetrators were caught. Great, you know, they're not at large. Um, and the, 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 the special needs man is back at his, his home. He's with his family again. You know, so, I mean, justice was served and will be served here. So... Those are, those are actually good things. Um, one thing that will forever confuse the shit out of me, though, I will not lie, is the fact that these people decided to record their actions and then upload it on the Facebook. I mean, I'm going to be a 45-year-old man thinking back after this, and, and I'm just going to be like, why? What the fuck were they doing? Why? They must have wanted to go to jail. 
Like seriously, I think I think you know a part of me thinks that those those four black people, I think they wanted to go to jail. I don't I don't understand why they would obviously commit a crime and then upload it on the Facebook for millions of people to. I don't know. I think they wanted to go to jail. So I think we've given them what they asked for. But um, on a serious notion, though, I mean, if you're a white person, don't don't become racist. Don't don't let this you know purge your view of other individuals because that's what they want. They want to create antagonists to fight against. They want a problem. They want to rage against the machine. Don't let them. Beat them at their own game. You know, these are individuals, and they're going, and, and here, again, here's the good news. They're going to pay for their actions. So, so I mean, justice wins in the end. We, we've won. Uh, hopefully, the um, special needs man doesn't suffer too much um, emotional trauma from what happened. I certainly hope not, but that remains to be seen until now. But in the end, for now, I think, uh, I don't know. I think we'll I think we'll be okay. Hopefully I think we'll be all right. It was a terrible thing. I don't see how this has anything to do with Black Lives Matter though, to wrap the video up. I don't see any connection. But um don't let them gaslight you. Beat them at their own game. So with that being said, man, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did man go ahead and click the like button. Yeah shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.